And so here we go. Picks and bans for game number three. KT versus CJ. And there's a vein ban against Space. This is the most vein bans we've seen in years. Yeah, it's really interesting that we're seeing this. Vein and Yasuo, okay, well, this is a very interesting ban phase already. No kidding, what is this, 2013? Close to banned once again by KT on the blue side. They banned in all three games tonight. This means that Maokai or Azir is going to get through. Those were their two other bans in game one on blue side. And after Shy's performance, you gotta think that maybe that Maokai is a little bit more of a threat. Gragas banned. Against KT, they did first pick it in game number one and uh, roll that barrel to success. It was a success barrel. So do you take out the Azir here and try and first pick Cassiopeia? Cassiopeia could also be banned in that last spot by CJ, which is what they did in game one. But they also took out Sejuani and Alistair in game one. So there's the Maokai ban, makes sense? Yep. Shai did very well on that champion last game. So what's it going to be? Sejuani or Cassiopeia? These have been, seemed pretty important to CJ Antis tonight. I feel like if Cassiopeia is not banned, KT will first pick it. If it is banned. I think you ban Cassiopeia here. Yeah, if it is banned, which it probably will be. I wonder if KT is going to fist, uh, oh, first pick a Wow. Sejuani. Wow. So now the thing is, is that if KT goes for Cassiopeia, CJ can grab Rek'Sai. Or Azir. Or Azir, that's true too. Uh, and so I guess they feel that they're going to be able to outplay them. So KT for the first time tonight doesn't ban Azir. Leaving it up for Coco. So they could take the Cassiopeia, but that Cassiopeia-Azir matchup is a pretty skill-based matchup in the mid lane. We'll see if Nagne's ah, up the Ah, there's the Shiver. Okay. Oh. oh. No, switching out Alistar. to the Alistar. Okay. Wow. Interesting. I was wondering if they were going to first pick that Sivir, too. That's what I was kind of predicting, but no, the Alistar. With Thresh still available, is the Alistar just that much of Well, it's it's more of not showing what your plan is than priority, I suppose. Alistar is just really strong right now because he does he have to sustain in the laning phase. He's got good synergy with champions like Vayne, and he has some nice engage options, obviously, as well. But when there's so much hard CC, if you have, like, a rumble, I mean, we've seen so much Sejuani rumble Alistar work where people just get locked down on an equalizer yeah. for a full duration and take a huge amount of damage. Ambition could be playing his new new again, but that would give Rek'Sai over to Score, and Score has long been one of the best Rek'Sai players in Korea, so there is a risk associated with that. I think Score would be much more innocuous on the new new, so it will be Azir and new new. So they're going for the Azir new new combination for the late game, which is why they wanted to take that, but it does make the Gragas and Sejuani bands, in my mind, not quite as impactful. You know, by picking, by first picking that Alistar, that does give them a, a better LeBlanc game as well, too, because you know the support, at least, is going to probably be pretty squishy. Azir already picked as well, so might be able to make it work. Hmm, Ziggs, hmm, maybe. I kind of like LeBlanc a little bit better for Nagne. I like the Silver LeBlanc pick. Go yeah. with what worked in the first game, except this game you have the Alistar, which is even better for diving than the Nautilus is. Definitely. So you can continue that same play style, and Sivir will be locked in. As then will the LeBlanc. Funky. Then get funky. Get funky with the funky lobby music. Two more picks for CJ. The question is, are they going to leave their top laner or their mid laner up for last? Since they know the mid laner is going to be LeBlanc, I think you take your mid laner in this round of the draft because KT could get really scary if they're able to pick Hecarim, but they won't pick Hecarim if they don't see a top laner because Nar is so punishing after Black Cleaver to Hecarim. True. So they'll wait to last pick the Nar. So I think you last pick top lane here if you're CJ. Take the AD now. Uh, they've got good protection, Good two good blood boil targets. Thresh is not a good blood boil target, but Jinx is. Yeah, yeah, Thresh is not, but Jinx is. So Thresh, Jinx here, that's a powerful lane, obviously. And you move with your, you, you have some options here for blood boil, and yeah, save that top pick. All right, well, Rise would be interesting, and someday uh, has not shied away from playing some 
Surprising picks in the top lane this series. This is a good draft. You want to take Hecarim against the Jinx, but you know you're going to be punished for it unless you get a lane swap against the Gnar. So, problematic decisions for KT. They have to have some, like, more waves even still than they already have. Of course, the Sivir is a nice option, but it would be good to have some more backline dive. Yeah, do you just take the Gnar then? I think you have to. You have to. And you take Nar Rek'Sai here. I think you're probably going to be right. Ah! Hmm, Evelyn Rek'Sai gets some nice flinks in onto uh, Jinx, that perhaps. That is an interesting thought that I had not considered before, but yes, if they want to snowball off the early lane, you can get some nice Jinx, uh, or some nice ult, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Whoa. wow, dangerous. Okay. They're doing it. They're going for it, so you'd imagine it's going to be a Nar, and I mean, Shy's had some good NAR games, but has would, he? Would you? I mean, good. Has yes, he? good, as in above average, but not spectacular. And, and what I was about to say before I was cut off, Monte Cristo, is that he's not the best NAR. So does CJ actually want to kind of put their money where their uh, oh. mouth is? I think the Servana is going to be a bit better. I, it's definitely not better in the 1v1 matchup, but, but Shy, Shy is, is better. better. Yeah, Shy yeah, is better is on Shivana than Nar, though. So it's it's a better comfort pick for him anyway. Yeah, we hadn't discussed that option because Shy is really it's like the, the only one who, only plays, one who in, plays this. In Korea. In Korea, but he drew so many bans during the playoff match against SK Telecom by having some just fantastic Shivana ultimates, and you can yeah. play it with the Smite as well. Be a really interesting match. Man, they scale well into the late game. Great engage. I love it, Shivana. All right. Well, we'll see if CJ can make this work. They certainly have many times in the past with Shy's Shivana. But KT with a, a really good team for getting onto this Jinx, dealing with her quickly. Uh, frankly, you know, getting onto Azir as well, too. The Emperor's Divide, the Sand Soldiers, the zones that Azir creates don't mean quite as much if you can get. Flanks from Evelyn if you can get Hecarim and LeBlanc coming in over the top. Problem is CJ in the late game has insane peel for Jinx. They have multiple knockbacks with Shivana yeah. ults, with Azir ults, great peel with the box and absolute zero. So the Jinx is going to be quite safe. So KT needs an early advantage. Score has to do work on this jungle Evelyn. They have to get some kills and start snowballing because otherwise CJ is terrifying in the late game. Yep. Well, both teams with an opportunity to, again, get a lead early and snowball it to victory. We've seen KT do it in the first game. CJ did it in the second game. And which team is going to take the third one? Either way, really no matter who wins it, both of these teams still looking very even this season. Yeah, it's been a very back and forth tonight. Uh, I think both teams have drafted good comps, but KT... They have a much more specific way to win this game, I feel, and they have a limited timing window, whereas CJ, they can weather the storm early. They will be immensely powerful in the late game. That's right. Well, it is time. Game three, KT versus CJ. Let's do it. have once again entered Summoner's Rift, KT Rolster. Versus CJ Antis, as you can hear from the fans. And who's going to take it? That's the question. And a question that uh, if this game goes like the other ones tonight is going to be answered pretty quickly, actually. A score getting that ward in barely. Wow. Deciding to flash, yeah. I had to flash right there because he was cornered. They were going to see him. There's a possibility that he just get gets flayed or hooked forever. So now they don't know that he used flash, though. That's true. So that flash may not be that impactful, but we'll see how these ganks go and if he actually needs it in the first five minutes of this game or whether that's going to go unpunished. I mean, pre-6, Evelyn really isn't the type of champion that benefits a lot from early flashes, so well, you think it'd you be wanna, okay. Sometimes you want to stick to people with those hate spikes for a little bit longer in order yeah. to finish a kill. 
because you need that DPS. But That's kind of if things have gone wrong, though, you know? If things go right, you shouldn't need to flash at all. Well, I think that's true in most situations. <laughs> so if things go right, he won't need it. Good, I'm glad we're agreed. <laughs> so KT's going to, or CJ's going to see this lane swap coming in. Yep, they got the deep wards, so they are going to match the lane swap here and have a pretty distinct range advantage Oh yeah. on the Sivir Alistair lane. So we'll see how this works out for him. They are going to opt into this one. And Fixer trying to freeze this as much as he can, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Well, well, never mind. They're not. Yeah, he's going to so get that level 2 with the 2v2. Yeah, he didn't know if CJ was there or not, so you have yeah. to try and freeze it in that situation regardless, so you maintain control. That space already harassing with some of these rockets. Mad Life misses the flay. But CJ being quite annoying and trading very well at level 1. Yep. There's Range really advantage. nothing you can do. Range definitely helping. And score coming in here in the mid lane. Maybe an early gank onto Coco, thinking Level about it. Level two gank. Yep, that's right. Nagane coming in. Oh, he hits him with a the chains. They get the flash from Coco. The stun still happens, so Coco going to take a lot of extra damage. Yeah. Getting that flash is pretty nice for KT. Yes, getting that away. And they weren't going to get that kill even if score had flashed right there either. Maybe could have gotten a barrier, but... Yeah. Definitely not the end of the world. Score not going to find a blue buff on that side of the map. Already taken by Ambition. So Got Ambition it. looking to three buff right here. Madlife wandering and early does get seen by the Wolf Spirit, and he's going to catch Evelyn doing the Wolf Camp. So Score wants to back out right there. He is in a potentially perilous situation. Space just handling himself up in the top side. Yep. Arab's just trying to farm, but he's already a little bit behind, getting poked quite a bit and just getting zoned. Now so this 2v2 working out pretty well for CJ. Now they, due to that ward, they have an idea that Evelyn is on the grop right now. So they've, they're keeping eyes on the jungler, making sure that Evelyn can't try anything crazy in the top side. So CJ playing a little bit more reserved as a result. They have the scuttle crab, but that's not gonna be too helpful against Evelyn. And now the score's gonna get seen again as he clears this camp. He knows there's a ward there, but he has to clear it so it'll respawn. Yep. But that's going to give even more information over to KT. Ambition going to get his second blue buff right now. That's right. Coco finally catching up in CS. He was down a little bit, but things are stabilized a bit now. So it really, a lot of this really is going to depend on score. If he can create the plays, because it doesn't look like these, these uh, lanes are going to win themselves too hard. Except for someday maybe against Shy. Well, still going to be pretty even and farm focused down there. There's not a big range advantage like he would have with Gnar against the Hecarim. And, you know, Hecarim was nerfed this patch. He can't spam that Rampage quite as much as he used to. Did take some nerfs to the mana cost on that Q. True. Wow, both these top laners getting pretty low. No junglers around to take advantage of it, though. And... Right now, I mean, KT, I suppose, just really needs to make sure that CJ doesn't take a really early dragon uh, with Nunu. There's a lot of action happening in the mid lane right yes, now. Yes, there is. Coco getting stunned a bit. Score and someday coming in. Coco gets away, though, with his soldier. Yeah, it looks like uh, Score and Ambition ran into each other as Ambition was trying to wrap around in that mid lane. So yeah. a little scuffle erupts, and it's like actually CJ comes out the victor in that little skirmish just by a little bit. Nice CS lead though for Nagne in mid. So throughout this he's been able to kind of increase his position there. Well and Coco's had to play back. I mean the reality yeah. is he is playing a flashless champion against Evelyn LeBlanc. There is a really large risk. Mm -hmm. So it's smarter just to not die, not give up that first blood and lose some CS for an oh, arrow. And arrow fixer pushing him away. A little bit of his shield, though. Arrow gets ignited in a little bit of trouble. Oh, walks into flame. He actually spells shields oh! through it. And first blood for Arrow. Not bad, and he may get the double. Getting very close. Eel. He's got the flash. He's got the flash. Doesn't want to try it. A little bit too risky. I don't know if they knew where Ambition was, so. Wow. Better safe than sorry. So they really. play. Oh, Coco caught up under turret. Score coming in. It's going to be another kill. This one going to Nagne. Suddenly. 
KT picking up two kills here and jumping yeah. out to a little bit of a lead. Using the fact that Coco didn't have that flash up again, Ignite able to make the kill. Madlife pulling Space back into lane right there, but it was a bit of a misplay. Uh, when Space took that lantern, actually, to try and finish that kill, they set themselves up for the two-man pulverize, which yeah. really turned that one around. So actually, Fixer being very patient in the lane, waiting for that lantern to be used before he did the pull, but frankly, CJ should have seen that one coming. Well, as it is, this 2v2 lane has just changed a lot until Space goes back because it's a BF sword for Arrow. Space was still just that dagger. Let's watch what happened in the mid lane. So, yeah, Coco just continues to get caught by the chains, even though he dashes over to the Sand Soldier and score. Surprises him on the outside. He barely doesn't get a kill there, actually. It was really, really close. And yeah, Nagne was just getting hammered by both of those Sand Soldiers, and it's going to take it. Here we go. Score coming in again. Smites the Gromp away. That's just rude. Uh, yes, it is, but effective. And I wonder if the buffs that the dragon got is making it harder for Ambition to take such an early dragon that we've seen Nunu's take a long time. I mean, KT's done a good job of keeping vision over the dragon pit, but still. Here comes Score. There's it is no kind of pink a... ward right there. Madlife is waiting, expecting something to go down. Madlife yeah. is here, Nagne. Well, he missed his chains. Oh, but the uh, death sentence does not miss Score. Fixer's there, though, to compensate. Yeah, as soon as you see Madlife walk out there, you miss the chains. You can no longer go for that gank. Yep. Uh, Coco also has his flash back up, so probably the best you're going to do is be able to blow the flash. Ambition so now walking into the mid lane as well, trying to deter them from making multiple plays right here. But Arrow's just going to go for the dragon as CJ stacks up on the top side, someday walking down. Yeah, someday. Not going to take too much damage from that, though. And it looks like KT should be able to secure their first dragon of the game. Do you think the buffs of Dragon were kind of an indirect nerf to Nunu a bit? I think Nunu probably still has no problem going through it just because he has, usually if you try and solo that Dragon early as Nunu, you're going to have a couple points in Consume anyway. I suppose. Uh, if you want to like level three, you probably have two points in Consume and one point in Blood Boil or something like that and 25 additional damage per hit. Uh, well, as big as the lead that Coco had over Nagne last game, it's been turned around 180. In this game, Nagne with a really decent CS lead over Coco so far in this game. Well, he needs it. He has to be able to burst members of this CJ and his roster down. Yeah, definitely. Or that's it. It's game over for KT because the sustained damage, he has to kill someone. The sustained damage in a fight of a blood-boiled Azir or a blood-boiled Jinx is way higher than anything KT is going to be able to put out. They have to make picks and they have to get a big lead here in the early and mid game or they will just get massively outscaled. Yeah, they've got the beginnings of that, but they need to continue to try to follow up with it. We saw them do it very well in game number one. Nice CS lead for Arrow down in bot lane as well, too. So, so far, so good for CJ and Coco. And Nagne being very careful about that. Coco already has plenty of damage here. No, just go for, uh, Nagne could just go for the poke damage over yeah. time. Shy starting to win. Whoa, ult from Shy going in onto Someday for the 1v1. Someday looks like he's going to barely make it out. Yeah, Shy right there. Someday actually holding on to his ult. I know, so he was pretty safe that. in that situation. He knew what the damage. There's no ignite from Shy, so getting close right there, but that was the skirmisher saber being finished first for Shy because he started with the Ruby Crystal. Right. Whereas someday started with the uh, flask. So he was able to get the components sooner, so he actually nice got dodge. some nice true damage down from that smite. And someday lost the duel. Yeah. Lost the duel but not his life, and that's the important thing. And didn't lose his ult either, which is pretty great. Both top laners holding on to their teleports for now as well. Advantage on blue side, though, if you're in a top 1v1 like that. Yep. Oh, Mad Life. Definite advantage on blue side if you can kill their support. Looks like they will. Fixer gets that one. Yeah. You don't expect KT to be there, but a lot of pink wards still around that dragon pit in order to create that pick. Yep. Nagne still poking Coco out of lane. So I get a proxy farm as a result of this. His Cinder Hulk already completed. And I was just saying, on the blue side, so we saw Shy right there having the Krug buff on Shivana, but having Grom in that 1v1 is so much better. Oh, wow. Are we going to see? Yeah, why not dive the Jinx? Or why not turn around and kill Nunu? Uh-oh. Ambition, a little bit of trouble, walks right into it. There's a headbutt, pulverize Ambition, may have to flash. Oh, gets out on the lantern. Nice play by Mad Life to rescue his jungler there. 
So KT not ending up getting anything out of that. It's been, there's been a lot of uh, fights around the Dragon Pit when the Dragon's not there this game. Wow, oh, Shy. Oh, Shy got the Krugs. And he got the Gromp, actually, on the other side of the map in the enemy jungle and then comes back and takes the Krug as well. So okay. someday here on a mission under the turret. Oh, not someday. sure where he's going. I don't know. OK, ult's back out. Looks like he'll make it, but that was an interesting chain of events for someday. Just getting chased away from the Krugs by Shy down to kind of an awkward spot. I guess they traded alt for alt. I mean, Coco used his, Someday used his, so it's a bit of a wash. Yeah, Shy is really pushing Someday around in this top side, especially now that I was talking about, like he said, he has that Gromp buff, and that's just extremely good for trading. Yeah. So Shy really holding his own, and there's a reason why SK Telecom banned out this Shivana after game one in the series, the best of five that CJ and SKT played. He was such a strong performer on this champion. Yep. And again, he's putting all the pressure down, taking the enemy jungle camps away, putting down damage onto the tower, bullying someday out of lane, getting the CS lead. Shy is massive. Yeah. So they're really going to need to count on Nagne and Arrow to sort of take care of this, because right now, someday, starting to fall farther and farther behind, losing his turret straight up, losing lane pretty hard to Shy. Yeah, that's troubling. Very troubling, because if Shy gets too tanky, Nagne will not be able to kill him, mm -hmm. and Arrow's going to have to get rightfully close. It's more of Shy saying, hey, who needs an R anyway? <laughs> Just play Shivana. I don't think someday can fight Shy. Nope, he's a level down. Yeah. I, shy hasn't been close. Shy about. Shy hasn't been Shy. Well, no. it's that time of the night. Well, Shy hasn't been Shy about popping that smite on a regular basis as well. Yep. Well, you've got two charges, so you've got a lot of opportunities. Score getting poked a bit by Coco. And the next dragon is coming up in about a minute, so that's going to be KT's chance to sort of get another little leg up in this game if they can do it. But if both top laners join the fight, it's certainly going to look a bit better for CJ at this point. And they get the flash from space. That's really nice coming to this dragon, actually. Yeah, that's... Pretty huge. Not to mention, Arrow has Infinity Edge right now. Space hasn't gotten his quite yet. We'll see if he picks it up before Dragon. Meanwhile, score. Oh, no. Getting really low. Oh, barely lives through that Ignite from Mad Life. Okay, looks like what happened there was score got hooked over the wall. Yeah, I think so. And then got hit by Space a bunch of times. Space popping his ult at the end, and the Ignite nearly finishing off. And Summer Heal actually saving him Yeah. in the end. And it looks like he might be able to get back by Dragon, because it doesn't look like either team is going to make an attempt for it right away. Yeah, but the question is, can CJ clear some of these pesky pink wards that are ringing the Dragon Pit at the moment? Yeah. KT going to clear some wards of their own. Ambition already here on the bottom side now. Coco not in lane, so Ambition has to be careful. He could get caught in a pincer right here, especially with on the hunt available for use. Well, Nagne and Arrow are real dangerous for CJ right now, because they both have Shy Quite taking away the blue buff while they oh. contest the very nice play from Shy. Knows yeah. everybody's down there trying to get position on the Dragon Pit. Can take that objective for free after he's already pushed down that top tier one. So they secure both blue buffs again for the second time in this game. Oh, I'd be curious to see the money between the top laners right now. See how far Shy is ahead at the moment. I, I guess he's about... 600 gold in the lead just based on CS, the fact that he got gold from the turret as well as the global gold, five or 600. Well, that doesn't sound as impressive as I thought it would, so thanks. <laughs> Never mind. Well, he doesn't have any kills yet. <laughs> uh, CJ activates his drag, and they've managed to get a bit of position, but KT looking like they want to go in. Here's the teleport coming in. Fixer goes deep. Score trying to get a bit of a flank. Nagne coming in. Who's he going to try to blow oh, up? It's going to be space. Space taken out by Nagne. So kills going well. Someday ulting over the Emperor's Divide onto Coco. The other carry in jeopardy. A kill, though, for Coco as Shy chases Arrow away. Shy picks up that kill, and CJ turning this fight around big time. They never got to take out Coco, and Someday not able to do much, if anything, here as CJ turns around that fight. They lost space early, but somehow held on. So they caught space out next to the Dragon Pit without that flash. They were able to kill him, but KT made a huge error because we saw someday 
actually trying to go past the Emperor's Divide, but fighting in that choke point with Azir is absolutely perfect. Ambition yeah. was also able to get Absolute Zero channeled in the choke. KT can't fight in chokes here. They have to make picks first, and they got the pick out in the open to start that fight. So let's take a look at this right now. So Fixer's gonna go in on this. Someday is already on the flank right there. And look at this, Nagane gets a great pick onto space. So now it's a 5v4 in this fight right now. But Someday overextends. Everybody gets oh, bottlenecked right there from KT. Someday gets isolated, can't do anything at all. And it allows Coco to move forward through the absolute zero. That was really good team fight positioning from Coco. Start it with the Emperor's Divide, set up those soldiers, and then as soon as, soon as Someday's back there and the Absolute Zero's going down, go ahead and move through to the other side of the fight because that choke is still splitting up the members of KT while you can stay as a tight bunch. But yes, KT got that fight, got the pick they wanted, great pick, and then got really greedy moving into that choke point and were beautifully punished by CJ. Yeah, when, when as a team you walk into a choke like that, things are not going to go well. Well, just especially with these two team compositions, CJ is absolutely the king of the choke point in this, and you just need to pop that Civil use it to get a LeBlanc pick very quickly, and then turn back onto the Dragon and pull them out into the open. Right. Score not getting a lot done with that. Evelyn either during that fight, too. Well, he's got a warrior enchantment, so he certainly has enough damage, but he is going to be quite fragile. Hmm. And Shy just... Pretty monstrous now, killing a, a couple of assists in that last team yep. fight. Uh, Nagne coming up though, Shy could be in a little bit of trouble. CJ chasing as well with Nunu. Nagne trying to get some damage done. He's gonna follow Shy through his ultimate. Does he have the burst though? Here comes Someday to finish him off. And Shy is still alive. Oh, there we go. Nagne takes him out, but here comes Ambition. Will Nagne get away? Flashes out of that absolute zero, but another snowball should do the trick. There we go. <laughs> Ambition with a kill. Someday manages to make it out. So trading top laner for mid laner. Eh. It's going to result in maybe mid lane turret going down in favor of CJ. That's not too good for KT. Uh, scores here, but he's really low HP. So yeah. not quite a finisher onto that yet. KT really committing to that top lane gank. And they didn't get the kill either onto, onto Someday, which I think is what they were really hoping. And they had to abandon bottom lane. This leaves space alone with the Jinx down there. Well, this is the second game in a row now where KT has overcommitted to a top lane gank and uh, lost quite a bit because of it. Yeah, really not a great play right there. Coco was easily able to push out, and that's the scary thing. Turrets go down real quick if there's an Azir and a Jinx on the other team. You leave, leave them unattended in lane, and they will absolutely shred them. Yep. So you have a lot of fast push options with this composition that CJ's winning. And Shy, Shy's dominance over the top lane has been the big problem for KT, the, the nut that they haven't been able to crack this game. And because Nogne has had to roam, look at this. Coco's right back in terms of CS right now, and they're scaling into the mid game. So KT, I think, in, in really big trouble. Yeah, it's starting to look that way. The fact way. that they're behind in gold at 20 minutes with a warrior enchant Evelyn and this particular composition against the late game powerhouse that is the CJ comp, not likely that KT is going to come back into this one unless they can get yeah. some absolutely stellar picks. They it's have to look around the map and make set traps. Meanwhile, Shy just gets to try and take blue buff again. Yeah, why not? Someday comes in. Looks like Nogne will get it, though. And there's a turret, though, taken by CJ. Yeah, and, but it distracts you know, them enough. It requires so many people just to deal with the blue buff pressure that there's a yeah. turret going down. And now Coco's going to sit here with that blood boil in the mid lane, just continuously pushing up that wave. It's been decision making, too, for KT. That's been the problem this game. You know, over committing to ganks, uh, not paying attention to team positioning during fights. So it's the team. They need to tighten things up a little bit. But it may be too late for this series. Yeah, maybe. Well, still going to be moving forward and continually putting the pressure onto KT. Yep. Love that immediate use of the Azir passive right there. All three lanes dominated with a minute left. Deep Ward's already in, so great setup. Not going to clear the one by Raptor, but plenty more where that came from. And CJ also has the time to get more in right now. They've got Mad Life and Ambition. 
well in advance right there. They can take out the Raptor buff as well if they want it. Well, actually, no smite up, so he can't take it. Well, at least he can kill the Raptor. And he's so far ahead of the Zeppelin, too. 87 to 58 in terms of CS. Yeah. He's three levels up. Wow. Oh, no, only really? one level up. Sorry. I was going to say. I misread the screen. Our monitors are kind of small. It's true. Still. Looks like KT's trying to get a little bit of positioning over the Dragon Pit here, but again, I feel like against his team comp, you really can't fight too much head to head. They're going to need to find. No, they need to get that pick. vision advantage sooner. So they're trying to do that now, but the problem is there's so many deep wards in their jungle that KT's going to know everything about their movement on the map. Right. So there's not really a lot they can do. They have to get a pick in order to fight this. They cannot fight a team fight as things sit currently. So do you, do you just give this dragon up then? Looks like they will. Thinking about it. It's uh, a really I tough situation because you give this dragon up and there's not hope for you really in the late game either, right? Yeah. So, so you have to make a play. Make a play now. They will just give the dragon up though. Yeah, Shy walking down there too. They had already set up his five members falling someday onto that side of the yep. map. Shy actually having a Raptor buff right there on his way over just to get some additional Ward clearance done. Now they're. Ooh. Um, Nogne trying to pop in for some damage, but not getting a lot done. Well, they saw space at the bottom side, so they thought maybe if they could get some poke, they could actually follow it up, but yeah. nobody really taking too much damage. They're still going to try, but one sigil on the Mad Life, not really going to help. Not a whole lot, no. Coco also building super safe this game, went for an Abyssal Scepter. Mm as his second item after that Marilla Namacon. So about as conservative as you can get. Just making sure that he doesn't get bursted down by that LeBlanc again. That he can play out his mid lane and have that survivability for a late game Azir, but bypassing some higher damage on the way to do so. Nagne just bounced into a wall right there. Uh, that'll happen. Looks like someday's going for uh, Trinity Force, but it's going to be a while till he finishes that. Oh, Fixer getting poked so hard. Oh, man. That was very close to a kill. Whoa, in the rocket. Fixer passed to pop that ult to stay alive. Descendants just barely misses. <laughs> <laughs> well, bad life flashed uh, for that. He tried. <laughs> was airballing everything. Thought they might be able to follow up, but nice ult pop from Fixer right there at the very last second to avoid dying to the Jinx rocket. I probably would have killed him too. Yes, almost certainly. Well, someday getting closer to that Trinity Force. He's got the Sheen now. But what's the Trinity Force gonna do though? Maybe uh, help if him he's kill Jinx, I guess. Yeah, if he's lucky, he'll he'll kill Jinx. But with the like I said, with the amount of okay. Oh, oh, Nagne catches Coco here. Emperor's divide. Knocks Coco away, and there's Madlife. Nice head, but pulverized. Oh, Madlife and Coco getting taken out by KT. Good catch, and that's what KT needs to do exactly if they want to have any chance in this game. Saw that opportunity, took it immediately. Now, can they translate it anything? They're going to try and get a tower right here. That's not really enough, though. Or is there? It looks like there might be after all. Yeah, mid turret taken out by KT. Able to power their way through it. They give up the passive on LeBlanc to do it, but Nagne can just go back and buy. Now, they they do catch up in gold, and someday looks like turrets. he's going to be able to take the top turret as well. Wow. But... Is that going to be enough? They still have that same issue of scaling. If they continue to get picks like that, though, they can make it work. Yeah, KT with a little bit of new life here for the moment anyway. But again, they need to keep doing that, and it's going to get harder and harder as CJ gets stronger and stronger. And they get more defensive items. You know, eventually, yeah. we'll probably be looking at a lot of Banshee's Veils on this team. Yeah, that said, Trinity Forest finished for some day now. Void Staff done for Nagne. And so KT that is boy putting staff together is some power. Really important. Yeah. Really important because of the MR items that are already on mid and top lane on CJ. So this is a good time for LeBlanc to get control of this game back again if Nagne can handle it. Someday with the Trinity Force completed as well, but still shy. Chasing him around a little bit. Yeah, that'll happen. Historically, dragon versus horse goes in the favor of the dragon. Yes, for all those dragons in history. Right, you know. <laughs> history channel. <laughs> history channel. <laughs> Pretty sure I saw that one. 
Probably like a all day R Dragons real <laughs> marathon. <laughs> Sounds like typical History Channel material these days. Fair enough. So big defense being mounted in this bottom turret. Will CJ go on this one? Big oh, crits. Oh, Arrow taking a lot of damage. Are we going to see the rocket from space? Not quite. No, they get the turret, though, and back off with the Sivir ultimate. So that's some more gold in KT's pocket as they start to move ahead in that regard here even more. Yeah, another little lead for KT. And someday chasing down Shy now. Mm, trying to bait Shy in because the other members of his team were close enough to respond, I suppose. All right, so CJ wants to put on some of their own pressure now at this point in the mid lane. But yeah, KT why not? They nice... go for a tier two. There's the Azir passive coming in. They could just chase this all the way through. They have such a strong siege with this composition. This is could where you want to start a rolling. Pretty good flank for KT though. I oh, well, score. Does he have his ult? He does. They get the turret. They pull in someday. Score coming in. There's a big ult slowing down a lot of people. Someday flayed away though, so it looks like KT is not going to be able to follow this up at all. Really good response from CJ. Go ahead, yeah. group up, charge down the mid lane right as you have some minion wave pressure reversing the other direction from uh, those turrets going down and you cleaning up the waves afterwards. So very decisive. Go in, pop the Azero, mount that defense in the mid lane. Yep. KT though getting an opportunity to get a little bit more positioning on the map. 30 seconds until Dragon's up. And KT with all the time in the world to get all the vision they want around that. Yeah, important dragon for KT here too. They have the chance to at least equalize. And there's the Trinity Force. It's been done for a while now for someday. He's got the home guard enchantment as well. So this may be a hell of a flank. Now we see how fast space can die. Nog, they got yeah. onto him very effectively. If Hecarim does too, they don't need too many abilities just to take him out of the fight immediately. He's the focal point. Shy in the top lane. Shy has full rage. So I have to be careful. Oh, about Fixer him. needs to not get caught here. Oh boy. That was close. Dodging some skill shots. And here's the TP in from Shy. Yeah, CJ just Hecarim's wanted to be there. Hecarim's still waiting. Yep. And KT in kind of an awkward position right now. Do they want to make maybe take the tier two? I don't know. That's a third dragon. That'd be kind of dangerous. Ult pop for Sivir. Where's the teleport? Shy's already, or someday's already there. Gets pushed away. Though the dragon is what KT wants. Ambition still trying to make something happen. Coco in the jungle. There's a nice headbutt. Whoa, what an ult from someday coming in as well. Ambition waits that ult sort of space. Gets one kill though. Will he survive? He's excited now. That's a double kill. Still alive. CJ barely clinging to life. And they're going to win this fight. Wow, that was close. That was so close. Uh, ricochet Arrow's still is there, super though. super dangerous right now. If Arrow gets a good ricochet auto He's off. He's going to try. Uh, OK, tried to get in there. Oh, couldn't quite so make close. it work. So close for KT. That was so well thought by both teams, actually. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Someday went on to a, an epic Oops. journey underneath the turret, which eventually killed him. But they couldn't kill space quite fast enough there before all of that peel came in. Wow, it he was close. He lived with just a sliver of health. But look at how that flank came in. This is beautifully executed by KT. So traps are there zoning. As soon as it goes down, watch what happens to space right here. Fixer, great setup, straight into the ult. Nogde also there. Space ignited, so close to dying. But look at the peel, the immediate response from CJ as well, bouncing everybody out of that fight. They knew what the engage was going to look like coming in. Yeah. And then from behind that Emperor's Divide, Coco had enough HP to just turn that one around someday. Gets poked by a sand soldier and then. Wah, wah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that happened. That Emperor's Divide uh, really saved the fight for CJ that as was, well, too. That if, was really well thought by both teams, however. Yeah. You could see that they had a very clear idea of how that team fight was supposed to play out for both their compositions and both executed on it. And CJ just under the narrowest of margins escaping. Well, score couldn't quite get the blue buff from Shy there, but KT chasing as well. Nagne really, really low though. Wow, what happened there? Didn't quite miss it. Maybe it was a fight with Coco or something? Yeah, it must have been. In it's the, the only lane. one nearby. Hmm. Hmm. Well, still a pretty close game, but CJ definitely with the edge now. 
Yeah, not so much armor on KT yet either, so uh, Space has been able to delay his last Whisper with a Vamp Scepter just for that extra sustain in these team fights, which is proven quite crucial, but yeah, the only the, the, the starting hint of a frozen heart onto someday. Has that glacial shroud right now, so space. He's had that for a while, though, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's getting pretty close to that frozen heart. Yeah, that's going to be a big turning point in terms of space's ability to kill him. Right. Man, that last fight was so close. That was, a that was one of the closest really team fights team I've fight. ever seen. Yeah. You don't see team fights get that close too often. Well, arrow. Able to clear some wards out in the Baron pit, at least. Mm, someday. Here we go. Hey, is he going to find that ult? There it is on the space. Fears him away from the turn. Oh, but Arrow gets the auto yet now, again. Can they get the Baron off this is the question. That How is much the question. can they get here? Well, CJ needs to defend it pretty vigorously here. But it's hard to do without your Jinx. Oh, man. They're not actually committing to this maybe quite enough right now. CJ still being annoying around the Baron pit, trying to push forth, oh, there we go. Uh, score comes in with the flank here, Emperor to survive, use early. Coco goes out on the Lantern, pops that Azir turret as well too. Now KT can turn on the Baron, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. Space still 14 seconds till he comes out. Now there's still a reasonable expectation for a steal yeah. right here. Remember, CJ has a consume and two smites. Oh man, so this, this is, is so risky, dangerous. they have to this turn so on dangerous. this. Yeah, KT can't commit to this right now. Nice knockups from Fixer. Shy in the middle of everything here. The tanky members of CJ making a difference, getting KT lower and lower. Shy backs off. Whoa, the rocket goes right through the middle of everyone. So KT gets a kill, but they are pushed away from Baron, and that's the important thing for CJ yeah, right now. CJ right now doesn't matter if Ambition died right there. One kill is not that big in the grand course of this game. CJ knows that they're going to have the advantage in the late game regardless. Yeah. So the closer that CJ can push this to six items, it's fine. Just don't let KT get that Baron so that they can close the game efficiently. Someday going right back to the Baron pit, though. I, space is in bottom lane. This is risky. Coco's back at base. They could rush the Baron. Uh, and that's exactly what they're doing. Someday starts it right now. Shy throws a ward in, so CJ knows what's up. Space trying to get there as fast as he can. He's got no ult to even participate with. Shy locked up. Nognig doing a great job of zoning. The Baron getting lower and lower. CJ coming in to try to steal it. Can they get it away? Meanwhile, Shy goes nearly down. The Baron taken by KT. Nagne very low. They have to get out of there, but mission accomplished. KT able to get that Baron because Space down in the bot lane, not able to participate. I don't know why you would sacrifice Ambition to stop that Baron and then immediately send your AD carry into the bottom lane yeah, very odd. while KT could just rush the Baron again. It was a great call from KT based on what they had seen after that failed Baron attempt just to go right back on it again. But you, you don't send your AD carry in that situation into the bottom side when you have a top laner with his teleport up to really Tremendous shot calling mistake right there from CJ. Yeah, hard to tell what they're thinking. Maybe they thought they just had KT intimidated enough that they wouldn't try it. Now they have a zero, so the game's not over. They could turtle really well with this composition. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, this is still a very close game. I would say probably the closest game we've seen so far this season yet. Nogne, ooh, got to be careful there. Got hit with the death sentence. KT still gets that tier two turret in bot lane. Yeah, CJ wasn't set up in a good place to defend that. The Shy was still pushing out the wave in the top side, but they should yeah. be able to group and save the tier two in the mid lane, or at least delay it going down. Drag it up at 10 seconds, however. Be That's a important. big takeaway from KT to stop this five dragon pressure from CJ. CJ, they're gonna oh, fight this. Oh, here we go, yeah, into the choke. They're gonna push Ambition away. He's gonna pop back over, but then, uh, someday not finding that flank. They've got Ambition low, though. So can they just burn down this dragon? It looks like they can. They're already doing it. Yeah, they'll get this dragon. So a nice little uh, quasi pick, I suppose you could say, to get Ambition out of the fight. Also just delays that Baron buff where they're actually going to be able to siege with that for a while longer, yeah. keeping them in the jungle right there. Nobody in the mid lane to defend this, however, for CJ. Space is going to take the red buff instead. They're just going to straight up give up this tower at tier two. I guess so. 
So this entire game has been sort of a series of KT getting like two to three thousand gold leads and then CJ coming back and taking it away. Yep. But KT so far overall I think has had the better engages in team fights by just a little bit. They've been able to find the picks, they've been able to find the flanks. They've been setting it up really nicely too. Yeah put space and Coco in an uncomfortable position on champions that don't have a lot of mobility. And CJ, they need to find those chokes again. Still though, I mean, you have to like, you have to like uh, CJ's odd, odds at six items though. Well, yeah, I mean, that team is unbelievably strong in the super late game and we're pretty much there. We're getting there and effectively, especially when Coco gets that Zonia's Hourglass, so he's not going to be as vulnerable to the flanks that are coming in. Right. Big, big change. Also space you can see going for the Banshee's Veil there. Pretty obvious item to get at this stage to absorb one of those big cooldowns, whether it's going to be a devastating charge from Hecarim or an ult from Evelyn or something like that. Wonder if uh, Coco is ever going to sell his Dorans, right? Why would you buy wards? And here is the trap from CJ being set in the brush. Or is it a trap from KT? Are they trapped in the brush? Nobody's trapped in the brush now. It's, it's over. just a brush. The brush trap has ended. That's right. It was a, a brush with death, you could say. <laughs> no, uh, it's it's going to be that time of night, isn't there it? There was no death, though. Uh, well, they just it was silly. just a, a brush. Just a brushing. Just getting a little bit close to death. <laughs> Enough to kind of make you worry a little bit. So double Frozen Heart down onto KT now. Of course, against this Jinx, it's going to be an amazing help. Yeah. As Evelyn slowly gets tankier in this one. Score actually surprisingly hasn't died this game. The Immortal score back again. Harder to be immortal on a jungle champion, though, considering that he yeah. has to engage. <laughs> it's true. Much easier to be immortal where you just sit back and play Ezreal and just have two flashes. Yeah. Just clean up throw things from afar, and laugh your AD carry laugh. Those guys are jerks. Yeah, no kidding. Easy life. <laughs> Never having to think, just having to push buttons really quickly. Yeah. All you have to do is kill minions that are weak. All you do is prey on the weak as an AD carry. <laughs> minions, players, monsters, it's all the same. You can clean them up. Yeah. Don't try to impress me. Imp. <laughs> Piglet. I'm not. I'm not impressed. Well. The calm before the storm. CJ getting some time to farm up even more. Still no Zonius for Coco, though. They're giving him plenty well, of farm in the bottom really, lane. really close now. Yeah, he should have it on this back. There it is. And he does. Okay, it's yeah. It's big. Big timing for him. Still no Void Staff, though, uh, on this team composition that is finally getting a lot of MR on it someday. After his Frozen Heart picking up the Cowl. Still no Locket on the side of KT Rolster, though. Looks like the next big fight is going to be over Baron in about a minute. KT already setting up plenty of vision. And uh, by keeping CJ bottled up the way they have, they've got all the control in the world over this uh, Baron pit right now. Space also just getting more and more survivability. Yeah. I mean, if he gets a Bloodthirster, the shield combined with that Spectre's Cowl or a Banshee's Veil is going to drastically increase his chances of surviving that backline dive that KT keeps trying to execute on him. That should try, should help quite a bit. Oh, Dragon and Baron coming up. So close to each other, too. This could either be very good for KT or uh, good for CJ. Do you think Do you think CJ could just go ahead and grab that fourth dragon and then just count on their ability to turtle out against a Baron powered KT? Probably. Uh, they'd, they'd lose maybe one tier two for it, but KT isn't the best at diving towers right here because yeah. they need that flank. And if they all run underneath the tower, then CJ is just going to hit them with a million bounce backs, right? Right. Uh, from Shivana and from Azir, so. KT doesn't have a lot of tower diving options. So yeah, I think there's there's something to be said for just trying to win the game based on dragon stacks of your CJ right now. If you have to make if you have to make that trade as CJ, at this point, I think it's better to get the dragon than it is to get the Baron, as weird as that is. Well, I mean, judging by the state of the game, it makes a lot of sense. 
CJ, though, trying to get somebody, and that somebody is a red buff. Nagne, though, lurking by the Krugs, looking for picks. Everyone looking for picks right now. Yeah, Shy really just needed to clean out this top lane as KT collects around that Baron. Not too many wards, a lot of them already eliminated by CJ, especially some of the deeper ones. Someday is going to recall right now, start setting up for a home guard engage. Now that both Dragon and Baron are available, they're looking for that moment of weakness from CJ where they're spread out and they can get that quick pick. But Shy already joining up with his team. Yeah. Ooh, deep ward there. Space just finished Banshee's Veil. That's really important, actually. He went back and picked up that item after getting the red buff. Yep. All right, Dragon being taken by CJ right now, and his score going to come in with that flank. There it is. Alt U scoring a little bit of trouble. Nice knockups from Fixer. Emperor's Divide pushes KT away. The, but here comes Someday from behind, though. He's all over Coco. Coco in a little bit of trouble, gets taken down. Arrow being pushed away. He's kind of on his own right now. Another knockup onto Mad Life and Ambition Space. So there we go. Someday, oh, Mad Life pulls him away from the AD carry. It's big. Fixer takes out Shy though. A double kill in space is getting excited, and so are the CJ fans. As CJ, man, I think Mad Life really saved the day with that death sentence. That was onto such someday. a good peel for space right no there kidding. from the entire team all around, actually. Uh, Coco sacrificing. Oh, so oh, that was close. Close call, but at the end, space was actually able to heal up a lot thanks to that one vamp scepter. Now let's take a look at this fight again. First off, great flank by score, and Fixer hits both Space and uh, Coco with those abilities. But there we go, flash over the wall from Coco after he gets hit by this distortion from LeBlanc uh. and uses his Zonias. But look at how well Space plays around the divide right there. He's able to get a lot of auto attacks out of Fixer, Fixer but someday prevents that first reset from going down. Mad Life grabs him with that hook. Yeah. And even though Shy dies, everyone else just too low to deal with a jinx. You have to wonder a bit if I, uh, if someday had ulted towards Jinx instead of uh, instead of Coco on this Azir, if things had gone a little bit differently. Well, either way, you're going to get a blood boiled late game carry to deal with. So I, I mean, <laughs> it's it's kind of the lesser of two evils, and also Coco used that Zonia's Hourglass pretty well in that team fight. Uh, Space had his Banshee's Veil popped, actually looked like by scores ultimate, so that was pretty clutch that that didn't hit him. True. But in spite of that dragon, still a 5K gold lead for KT, and a, another extremely even team fight. And Baron is still up, so there's still something to fight over right here, should they so choose. Now, Shy has TP advantage, so CJ can play this one out a little more slowly. And they have now are threatening five dragons. So KT may just. No, they're going for the Baron right now. Ambition there. Here's what comes to teleport from Shy. KT, they may need to back off from this one. Okay, they will. They forced the TB. They just didn't want this split push pressure to keep going. Yeah. So they had to do something to get the teleport out. Makes sense. With that TP disadvantage, it's good to catch that. Agne. Almost getting caught himself. And CJ, yeah, just rushing down the mid lane saying, all right, if you want Baron, we're going to take a couple turrets for it. A little bit of damage on the Shivana. Slow poke for KT while CJ just backs off and maintains their position. They want to fight this off of that next dragon more than likely. Yeah. Ambition recalled. And if KT realizes that, they can make a play, but it's too late already. Score has GA now. That is very interesting because him reviving in fights, he's actually going to do some decent damage with that warrior enchantment. Seems that way. Oh, boy. Nagne could come in from the flank here as well, too. Oh, KT so close to setting up something pretty strong there. CJ doing a good job. Of oh, score over the wall. Onto Ambition. That's a lot of damage. Oh, he misses Chains. Either way, he pokes out Ambition quite a bit, and that may be KT's cue to go for this Baron. Yeah, Ambition recalling. Nope. Canceling it. Oh. oh. Pause. I'm so sad. This is such a high oh, man. tension moment no as kidding. KT is going to start this Baron right now after getting that good poke on Ambition. Remember, Ambition can just heal up a little bit by 
consuming some of the jungle camps on the way over. So we're looking at probably what's going to be a pretty big fight at this Baron as KT attempts to pick it up one more time. Wow, this has been a really good game. Yeah, it really has. Best game of the season, I think, so far. It's been very close, very back and forth the entire time. And, you know, th with the lead that KT has gold-wise and turret-wise, that's actually just making it even. That doesn't yeah. actually, like, give KT a lead. That just means this game is even right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think KT has pulled off some really hard engages in yeah. this game that has allowed them to stick around, even though CJ has so much peel for this Jinx. Jinx getting a bloodthirster could be pretty important, but Space not having quite enough money for that yet. Where'd he go? Vanished. Into space. Are we actually having a... A bathroom break? Is that, what's <laughs> happening? Is, that, is that what's happening right now? Is this a bathroom emergency? I think it might be. <laughs> it's like, I really have to when pee you, before this team fight. When you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised we allow that. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's been a, I mean, this has been a pretty long best of three, though, and a lot of these players are trying to talk about strategy in between the games, so sometimes there's not a lot of time. True, I suppose. I was like, what's going on? It's like, uh, yeah, the KT <laughs> players have no idea, man. <laughs> Ambition is just reclining. He's like, uh, how will I? Take it easy. Put your knees Which, up, you know, while you're while you're on the br break. Nice and relaxing break. He's like, well, I got poked out of this. That's the face of a man who's wondering what fine wine he will select when he gets home. <laughs> after this victory, after I steal this next Baron. That's right. After I can what, which it. vintage should I have tonight? And Arrow. He's kind of hanging out. He's like, eh, I'll never play Draven again. There we go. He's back. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> All refreshed. Good. Good. <laughs> He's a freshen up a bit before the team fight wants to look his best, you know, coming into this one. It's important. He's like, ladies, watch me while That's I do my right. work. <laughs> now I'm ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. Back in, and what's going to happen? The Baron being taken by KT. This could be very, very dangerous. Baron getting low ambition. Going to try to, ooh, KT pulling off for a second, faking. Someday, ready to push ambition back. Madlife ready to go in. Baron getting very, very low. And oh, he steals it. He steals it. But do they win the fight? Emperor's Divide looking pretty good. KT someday back over the Emperor's Divide. Fixer very, very low space. Getting excited now. And CJ looks like they're going to get the Baron and a lot more than that as Fixer goes down. Well, KT, you took the risk. I was right. That Ambition did steal the Baron. He I did. called him. He for did. That fight. Well, geez, he kind of had it handed to him on a silver platter. I mean, you just sort of sit there. You're like, oh, it's getting lower. You ready, well, Ambition? Uh, the, the problem, Jeez. the problem with that is KT was trying to set up a point. Oh, oh, Nogne coming in. Looking he actually aggressive. gets bounced by Madlife right there. That was yeah, pretty nice to prevent him from actually comboing. But yeah, I don't think that uh, this game is going to go any farther. But that's here. the problem. That is not a 50-50 Baron. Because CJ really? has the same number of smites as KT, but they also have consumed. So look so. at that. A kill on the shy, but how about that space? You only would have had to hold it for like 30 <laughs> more seconds. You couldn't do it, but either way, <laughs> CJ did it. And they take game three in our closest, probably best series so far of the season. That was great a, game, that, GG. That was a really good best of three and shows yeah. how solid both of these teams are. And <laughs> CJ. It was the pause for a dramatic effect. And there you so. go. Coach Sun hugging Four. Ambition after that steal because that was absolutely clutch. And it was a risky Baron from, from KT. But what do you do if you're KT in that situation? I Before know. everybody starts screaming Baron throw, CJ has the better late game composition. CJ has four dragons, and they've been stalling you out at this Baron. At a certain point, you have to take that risk because that's the way you actually win this game it's if true. you're KT. It's true. And they tried to stall it out. And were they going to get a better opportunity before that next dragon come up, came up? They chunked out Ambition. That was, was the a great chance. That was the best chance they were going to have. Yeah. Well, poor KT having to like wait five minutes for that. <laughs> but that's how it goes sometimes, I guess. 
A win for CJ Entis, a great best of three to end the night with, and uh, Space, the king of the final frontier, the king of the Porcelain Palace <laughs> and Summoner's Rift, <laughs> in one, uh, one game, and Final Frontier. Well, that's a uh, that is uh, quite disappointing for KT, is there? Hopes and dreams were literally flushed down the drain. <laughs> can we make any more uh, bathroom puns? Can we? Can you help me think of any more here? I feel like I feel like this is an opportunity that doesn't come around very often. Maybe it's low hanging fruit, but just experimenting here, I guess. Either way, a great series from both sides, and I mean, if if you make this into a best of five, either team takes it. Yeah, it's it's impossible to predict. So. I mean, we, we got a great series out of it, but really didn't get any closer to figuring out which of these two teams is better, which is kind of cool in a, in a certain sense. Yeah, I agree. I'm really excited to see how these, these two teams compete moving forward, because again, just from looking at SKT, CJ and KT, probably the top three teams in Korea right now, although KT will have to put up another performance this week against Jin Air. KT has a really hard week. Uh, against two of the other top teams in this region. And that's a rough loss and someday thinking about that one right there. But I, I do think that that was KT's best chance to close the game. It wasn't going to get any easier. They took the opportunity that they had. I agree. They, against the competition that CJ had, they really fought back stronger than many teams would have been able to. Yeah. So no, definitely not a throw or anything like that. Great game from both sides. CJ just uh, able to edge them out in the end.